It is the moment he has thought about and prepared for his entire life. It is a tight fit, but it is his. God save the king! Emerging from an ancient ceremony into a modern world, the crowned King Charles III. And waiting for him in a 260 year old gold state coach, his queen, the title held by his mother, now his wife's. Even with eight horses, the four ton gilded carriage can only be pulled at walking pace. But majesty is, in part, about being magical, and it seems there are millions captivated by it. Be it the fairy tale carriages, or the splendor of a 4,000 strong military parade. Or the family saga, the embarrassing uncle on parade, and rebel son, now best-selling author, pitching up without his wife and the coach carrying the dutiful future heirs to the throne. It is soap opera mixed with the opera of royal pageantry. An elected official couldn't do what they do. It's just so perfect. They're a law. It's fairy tale. It brings everybody together. Oh, There's lovely. unity. It's a sort of a, it's the proudness of being British. It's it's that's what the monarchy is all about. Thousands have come here just to be in touching distance of history, because of course a coronation is something we've not experienced in decades. But for that same reason, it's left others asking whether we've moved on from what it represents. <laughs> there was a zone set aside for protesters but some mixed with the royalists on the mound. One here arrested for bringing a megaphone that police said may have spooked the horses. I feel strongly that we should have, we should elect any head of state or any, anybody with any ceremonial responsibility. And we've got a wonderful country full of talented people who, who, aren't, who don't inherit privilege and wealth. But most came here to revel in a legacy they don't want to end. Earlier, watching on a giant screen in St. James's Park, the moment the king was crowned. But invited to pledge allegiance, I swear that I will pay to... No one had the words to hand, except this bit. Do you pledge your allegiance? Oh yes, I pledged my allegiance a long time ago. I love what he does for the country. I love the royal family, first off, and I think we need continuity and we need somebody who can represent everything about the traditions of this country. He is a prince, now head of state, head of the Church of England and head of the armed forces. Preachers for His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen. Hep, hep. <laughs> saluted by those who serve under him in Buckingham Palace Gardens. His authority rests on regimented formality and the passion of the public, and whether they connect with him. Certainly, there was a rush on the Mall for the best view of the finale. But in some ways, the endurance of the last monarch makes this rebirth harder. Her absence still felt as the king appeared on this balcony for the first time ever without his mother. Instead, a blended family, grandchildren from both sides taking centre stage. Notably missing one brother and one son. 
These are the faces of the future, the working royals, and those who are next in line to take on this role. Unlike royal occasions we're used to, such as weddings and jubilees, this is not just a celebration, but a day to affirm the majesty of one man. The late Queen described the imperial crown resting on Charles's head as unwieldy. Now he will know what it's like to wear it. Day the King was crowned. who's made a career out of biding his time, the moment had finally come. And what a moment, in a gilded coach built to commemorate the 60th anniversary of his mother's reign, the new king and his queen move slowly in the rain along the Mall towards his long preordained date with royal destiny. Waiting is the lot of the heir apparent, but none has waited longer than Charles. And so it is that amid soaked but cheering crowds, a prince school... At the abbey that's witnessed such occasions since 1066, Charles appeared relaxed. Queen Camilla, understandably perhaps, less so. It was a coronation that in some ways broke from tradition. Right from the beginning, a pledge to serve when greeted by a young chorister from the King's Chapel Royal. As children of the Kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. In his name and after his example, I come not to be served, but to serve. But it was mainly, of course, a ceremony draped in religion, solemnity and history. A coronation with the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of England and the Bible resolutely at its heart. At a service of considerable interest to his son and heirs, Charles prays aloud and alone. Give grace that I may find in thy service perfect freedom and in that freedom, knowledge of thy truth. Grant that I may be a blessing to all thy children of every faith and belief. And if that was a coronation first, so was this. The anointing of the king with holy oil from the holy land is perhaps the most sacred part of the ceremony. So sacred, it is hidden from view. What is not hidden is the crowning. It is the showpiece moment for the world to see. It involves all sorts of regalia, swords, orbs, gloves and scepters, and of course, the St Edward's crown. Thought about and prepared for his entire life. It is a tight fit but it is his. God save the king! God save the king! for the thoughts of young George and for that matter his father 
but for the youngest heir of them all, Louis, in the front row here, a long day is clearly taking its toll. Then the homage from the next in line to the throne. I, William, Prince of Wales, pledge my loyalty to you and faith and truth I will bear unto you as your liege man of life and limb. So help me God. And afterwards, a more unusual request. I now invite those who wish to offer their support to do so. I will pay true allegiance to your majesty. It was repeated here, but the country at large will have made what they will of it. So help me God. God save the King! God save King Charles! Long live King Charles! May the King live forever! And so to the crowning of Camilla. She is the Queen by marriage, the love we are told of Charles's life. Whether she was quite prepared for this is unclear. May thy servant Camilla, who wears this crown, be filled by thine abundant grace and with all princely virtues. What is certain is that it has not been easy, enduring vilification in the early days of her public relationship with Charles. She has a key role and will fulfil it, say her admirers, with a great sense of duty and little fanfare. There is no doubt she is his queen. They will both be hoping that very soon she becomes widely accepted as ours. country we may not have everything but we certainly have a history a thousand years and more but this is also a day when we cast an eye to the future our future as a country and yes as a monarchy what it will look like how it will be viewed indeed whether it survives heavy indeed is the head that wears the crown but today was about marking a genuine moment in that history of ours, the start of a new Carolean age, and also about celebrating a new king who has waited most of his life for the job he was born to do.